Today, I would like to share with you my policy paper entitled Rural Community Violence and Untold Public Health Epidemic. As you know, this policy paper was developed for the 2016 NRHA Fellowship Program, of which I am currently a fellow. My name is Brandy Bynum Dawson, and I am currently the Associate Director at Rural Forward North Carolina at the Foundation for Health Leadership and Innovation. Unfortunately, I, I am unable to attend this year's Policy Institute as I am excitedly awaiting the arrival of my first son in early February. I decided to ensure my participation in the fellowship program by developing this unique PowerPoint presentation. I hope you like it. Again, the title of my policy paper is Rural Community Violence and Untold Public Health Epidemic. Here you'll see outlined the key components of the policy paper. An introduction and background, which outlines the need to raise awareness about community violence, rural community violence specifically, as a public health issue. Also, demographic data showing the differences and similarities in rural versus urban communities. Key data trends, which show the prevalence of violence in rural communities specifically. Also, information included on the root causes of rural community violence. There's also a focus in the paper on the impacts and effects of rural community violence on at the individual and at the institutional level. There's also a closing summary which outlines the need for more information and more research to be conducted on this issue to shed more light from various levels. There are also included key prevention and intervention-based recommendations to hopefully address and alleviate the causes and detrimental impacts of rural community violence. To begin, I would like to provide an overview of the issue of rural community violence. We know that rural communities across the nation are quite often overlooked when it comes to analyzing crime and its impact on communities. But we also know that these vast regions are not immune to crime and that their isolation, geography, and socioeconomic climate in fact create unique challenges for the victims, families, healthcare providers, and criminal justice officials who are seeking to impact these challenges. This policy paper seeks to shine a public health light on the prevalence and nature of crime in rural areas across the nation. Surprisingly, there is little to no research to date on the history and evolution of crime and violence in rural communities, especially from a public health perspective. What we do know is that community violence is broadly defined as exposure to intentional acts of interpersonal violence committed in the public areas by individuals who are not intimately related to the victim. We also know that violence takes many shapes and forms, including assaults, abuse, homicides, thefts, robberies, suicide, and even bullying. Unfortunately, though, there are limited definitions specific to rural community violence as there has been limited research conducted on the issue. We also know there tends to be a misperception even about the existence, the level, and nature of rural community violence. But we do know from the research data and our own experiences that rural communities are impacted by violence just as urban communities are. Regarding demographics on the differences and similarities between rural versus urban communities, we know that rural America is home to about 60 million people we know of those 60 million people, about 47 million are adults ages 18 or over. While the majority of adults in rural areas own their own homes, we know they are more likely to live in single family homes. We also know that the population in rural communities tend to be older adults with a median age of 51 as compared with adults in urban areas with a median age of 45. We also know that while adults and rural residents have lower rates of poverty, 
They were less likely to have obtained a bachelor's degree or higher. Now, as it relates to children, while children in rural areas had lower rates of poverty in comparison to children in urban areas, we're talking 18.9% in comparison to 22.3%, we do know that a greater percentage of children in rural areas are more likely to be uninsured. That's a percentage of 7.3 compared to 6.3 for children living in urban areas. Now, the point of this data is just to be able to show the differences between rural and urban communities as it relates to key demographic data points. We know by having a greater understanding of the foundation of the assets and limitations in urban and rural communities and how each community must continuously adapt to meet the growing needs of its diverse populations. Additional data trends, though, more specifically to the prevalence of violence in rural America, tells us that, yes, there are stark differences between rural and urban communities, particularly in what influences the types of crimes that are likely to occur in rural areas versus urban areas. For example, the geographically and socially isolated nature, nature of rural communities tends to impact the types of crimes committed in these communities. Now, due to this isolation, rural areas are more likely to have problems with burglaries and thefts than with armed robberies and assaults. In fact, a 2015 study uh, published by JAMA Pediatrics analyzed data specifically around youth suicide rates. Now, what the data tells us is that the rates of youth ages 10 to 24 were almost double the rates in urban, I'm sorry, in rural versus urban communities. Now this was associated with or attributed to the social isolation, greater availability of guns, and difficulty accessing healthcare in rural communities as compared to urban communities. So in essence, kids in rural communities are more likely to commit suicide than those in urban communities basically because of geographic isolation, social isolation, the availability of guns, and the difficulty in accessing healthcare resources. We also know that for the last over a decade, actually, that violent and property cr crimes have been on the decline, which is wonderful news. Now, we also know that while that is true and that is the case, that rural Americans still remain victims of violent crime as well, as well as property crime at alarming rates. Now, getting down to the brass tacks about the root causes of rural community violence, there are many. We know that there are stark differences between the economic growth in rural versus urban communities, specifically because of the outgoing manufacturing and textile industries in rural communities all across America and the impact that has had economically on rural communities and their residents. We know that rural community residents are having trouble and difficulties keeping up with the technical, technologically advanced communities and the need to stay in that field. We also know that re experience reveals that without the proper community supports, including education, training, and transportation, rural residents and communities are not able to keep up with the growing demands of a technolo technologically savvy economy. All of these dynamics can lead to increasing crime in rural communities. We also know that poverty can lead to a high level of stress that in turn may lead to individuals to commit theft, robbery, or other violent crimes. Moreover, poverty-stricken communities create an environment where there is less access to quality jobs, therefore decreasing the opportunity cost of crime and increasing the probability of youth and other adults associating with negative influences. In general, rural residents face extreme economic, health, and social challenges, unlike their counterparts in urban areas. Rural Americans tend to have higher rates of poverty, lower rates of educational attainment, lower rates of health insurance coverage, and less access to health care and human service providers. These and other service limitations have enormous impacts on crime victims and their families. Now, 
just to focus on the impacts and effects of rural community violence, the way that I've described this in my paper is on two levels, at the micro level, where it impacts individuals and families, and at the macro level, where it impacts community institutions and systems. Now, what we know at the micro level, by research and experience, that individuals and families experience great traumas, both physically and emotionally, as a result of community violence. Now, this is a great public health concern, as victims and families are often burdened with substance abuse, poor mental health, stress, chronic disease, and other ailments as a result of either witnessing or experiencing traumas associated with community violence. Now at the macro level, where you have the institutions, the systems, and the laws that are set to protect, alleviate, and remedy the occurrence and impact of community violence, these systems are often strained in rural communities. Services are often fragmented, which result in crime victims not seeking services or not seeking quality services at all. The human and systemic costs of crime alone in rural areas are often more debilitating than in urban areas. What the numerous facts outlined in this paper highlight is that the issue of rural community violence is not only complex, it's multi-layered, it's dynamic, and it requires an immediate response. That brings us to the recommendations outlined in this paper. Now, I wanted to focus on prevention and intervention-based recommendations to ensure there are multiple levels to address, again, a very complex, multi-layered problem. By recommendation one, by promoting the allocation of resources to convene multi-sector partnerships and task forces to ensure that all sectors are at the table to address, again, this very complex issue. Now, this first recommendation is centered around raising awareness and developing concrete approaches to address rural community violence, specifically as a public health issue. Recommendation two, establishing local, state, and national funding partnerships to expand community and neighborhood resource centers. Now, these are programs and centers and initiatives that we know work. So, but by expanding those service deliveries into additional communities, into additional neighborhoods, we have the opportunity to increase our reach. Also, recommendation three, allocating sufficient local, state, and national resources to expand the reach of local mediation, conflict resolution, management centers and local communities to address the incidences of violence and to mitigate those recurrences. So expanding existing programs that are known and proven to provide those type of prevention and intervention services. Next recommendation, expanding evidence-based violence prevention programs in clinical care settings. So by creating this holistic approach to service delivery, we are to ensure that at all levels, both in prevention and intervention, that those who are seeking services may be witnesses of violent crime or victims themselves have an opportunity to receive services in multiple ways and in multiple locations. Also establishing local community awareness campaigns that promote community-based prevention and intervention programs that holistically address the needs of crime victims. So continue to provide and allocate resources and provide awareness and information about counseling programs, housing programs, litigation programs and opportunities, and transportation programs. So this holistic approach to addressing all the needs of crime victims. And last but not least, on the prevention side, earlier prevention side, expanding funding for school-based anti-bullying and mentoring programs for elementary and middle schools that focus on character education. So by providing those outlets and prevention programs that focus on youth, young people earlier and sooner, hopefully we can prevent the problems and issues as it relates to rural community violence. Now in closing, we know that there are varying levels of solutions to address the issue of violence in rural America. Now, the first is to first acknowledge the issue actually exists. The fact that there is a lack of media attention on the issue leads it to go unnoticed and the story untold. 
But by all of us taking our part and continuing to raise awareness, hopefully the issue of rural community violence will seek some remedies and be addressed in a very holistic way. I thank you for your time and dedication to this issue and this topic and look forward to working with each and one of you in the future. Thank you.